السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم، الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم أما بعد. Before I continue, I just need to make sure everybody's awake here. Yeah? Everybody's awake? Last time I asked a question, nobody was responding to me. Everybody's awake? Yes? الحمد لله طيب. Okay. So I've got a question for you. How many of us sitting here have wanted to become a Hafid of the Quran? Raise your hands. How many of us sitting here have wanted to become a Hafid of the Quran? They wanted to do this. Not very, not many people, Mashallah. Just a few. So the rest, they didn't want to do it, is it? No, that's what I'm asking. Who wanted to become a Hafid? Who wanted to? Who had the intention? Who wanted to be a Hafid? Okay, a few, not many. Subhanallah. Okay, who attempted to become a Hafid? Who attempted to become a Hafid? Okay, mashallah, mashallah. Allahumma barik. Okay. A few days ago, I was listening to a podcast and I came across this one concept, and subhanallah, it took me aback. We all believe in Allah. Agree? Yes or no? Yes? Yes? yes. Okay, get me worried now. Okay, we all believe in Allah. So the concept came was, yes, we believe in Allah, but do we believe Allah? Does everybody understand what I'm saying? We believe in Allah, but do we believe Allah? When Allah tells us, when Allah tells us that He gave Nuh alayhi salam life for 950 years, do we actually believe that? When He tells us that He caused Uzayd alayhi salam to sleep in the cave for 100 years, do we actually believe that? When He tells us that he caused the children or those youth that went into the cave, so from Kaf, and he allowed them to sleep in there for 300 plus years. Do we actually believe him? We do? Yes, we do. Okay, now my brothers and sisters, let me tell you something then. Allah says, That we have made the Quran easy for remembering. Is there anybody that would be, is there anybody that would be there who would try to remember it? Meaning try to memorize the Quran. We, be, we believe in Allah, we've affirmed and confirmed that we believe Allah also. So if Allah tells us, if Allah tells us and He's informed us that He's made the Qur'an easy for remembrance, so is there anybody that will take on the challenge of remembering the Qur'an, meaning memorizing the Qur'an? So I ask, and you don't need to answer this one, okay? Since the month of Ramadan has started, how many of us have attempted to memorize any portion of the Qur'an? How many of us have spent time memorizing the Qur'an? Reviewing the Qur'an? Yeah? I know some of us have, have we, we wanted to become happy, and some of us have attempted, and some of us are not in this category at all. Let's, let's change that intention, inshallah. Let's change that intention. We want to memorize some part of the Qur'an. Yes? The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informs us. That come the day of judgment, you call me the Quran, it will be said to the companion of the Quran. And some people have said this refers to the habit of the Quran, and others have said those who frequently recite the Quran, who are so much indulged in the Quran, it's like his companion. It will be said to them that Iqra wa rtaqi kama kunta turatilu fi dunya fa inna man zila taka in the afi ayat in tafara oba. That recite the Quran and go up in status in Jannah. Go up in status, just as you would recite in the dunya. So if we have the habit of reciting in the dunya, we have the habit of reading the Qur'an, then this will be said to us. And your final station in Jannah will be at the last verse you recite. So my brothers and sisters, if we only know the last 10 surahs of the Qur'an, yes, this is good. But why limit our station in Jannah? Why limit our station in Jannah? If Allah has told us He's made memorizing the Quran easy for us, and then He's given us the challenge who will be there that will try to memorize it, attempt to memorize it, then why not? Even if it's one ayah, imagine one ayah, and you go up one level in Jannah. And the lowest level of Jannah, my brothers, let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, let me tell you, the lowest level of Jannah will be equivalent to this dunya and ten times this dunya. That's the lowest level of Jannah. We can't even imagine what's in the higher levels. May Allah make us from amongst the people of Jannah to fill those la'ayah. Ameen. But 
my brothers and sisters, this Quran is a gift given to us. Allah said, what if we read today? Ar-Rahman, Allam al-Quran. Allam al-Quran. The scholars, they explain why is it Allah, he says Ar-Rahman first, the most merciful, and then says Allam al-Quran, he taught the Quran. Because the learning of the Quran is a mercy from Allah. Allah teaches us the Quran through his mercy. If we want to attain his mercy, my brothers and sisters, we need to hold fast onto the Quran, reciting the Quran, learning through Quran. Yes, we understand, we understand. The, uh, the older we get, it becomes a bit more difficult to memorize the Quran. And let me share with you this dialogue between Imam al Shafi'i and his teacher, Al Waqi, Ibn al Jarrah. So he says, Shakaut ila Waqi, Suwah Hufi, I complained to Imam Waqi. Imam al Shafi'i is saying this. We know Imam Shafi'i, one of the four great Imams. He says, I complain to my teacher about my weak memory. Imagine Imam Shafi is saying this. Nevertheless. So, فَأَرْشَدَنِي أَنْ تَرْبُ الْمَعَاسِي So, Imam Shafi's advice to me was, abandon sinning. فَإِنَّ الْعِلْمَ نُورٌ لَا يُعْطَى الْعَاسِي Why? Because knowledge, whether it's in the form of Quran or Hadith, is a light from Allah. And it's not given to a sinful person. So, my brothers and sisters, yes, the older we get, our sins pile up. When somebody is younger, they have less sins because they've left. They've lived less. The, the lifespan is shorter than the person who's lived longer. Yes, we cannot be sinless, but we can definitely sin less. Does everybody understand that? It's a pun of words. He gets it. We cannot be sinless. Everybody makes sins. Everybody slips up. Everybody makes a mistake. But definitely we can make an attempt to sin less during our lifetime. And when we have less sins in our lives, the less our heart is covered with the black dots, the more the Qur'an can penetrate into our hearts and the more it can have an effect on us. And let me leave you with this one final hadith of the Messenger of Allah which can be found in the Mustadrat of Imam al-Hakim rahimahullah. He says that the Messenger of Allah said that the one who memorizes the Qur'an, then on the day of judgment, his parents will be given the crown of honor. The crown of honor will be given to his parents. And then some of the common teachers, they, they comment on this hadith and they say, if this is the honor and the reward given to the parent of the Hafid, the one who has memorized the Quran, what about the reward of the Hafid itself? Huh? This is left out. What about the reward? So my brothers and sisters, let's make an attempt to get closer to the Quran. Let's make it a part of our lives. Let's make it a part of our heart. Make it a part of our heart. Last point, I know I said at the end of the hadith, one more point. We have the great Imam, Al-Imam Abu Ja'far Yazid ibn Al-Qa'qa, Al-Madani. One of the great Imams of Qiraat. The ten Imams of Qiraat, he is number eight, I believe. When he was, when he was in his deathbed, or when he, once he had passed away, once he had passed away, his students, amongst his students, were none other than Imam Malik, Rahimahullah, and Imam al -Nafir. When they were giving him his ghusl, giving him his ghusl, they saw a white patch next to his chest on where the heart is. Where the heart is. And the scholars of Medina, they said, this, this white patch, the patch, they say it was, it was whiter than a piece of paper. And the scholars in Medina, they said, this could be nothing other than the effect of the Qur'an, because he used to recite the Qur'an excessively. He was the Imam of Masjid al Nabawi. So this is the effect of the Qur'an, my brothers and sisters. Let's get in the habit of memorizing, even this one ayah. Let's make a target for ourselves, Juz Amba. If after Juz Amba, then we will Juz Tabarak. After that, Surat Al-Kaf, Surat Yasir. Let's do whatever we enjoy reciting. It's not that we have to memorize this part and that part. Whatever we enjoy. The more we enjoy, the better we get for us. The more we enjoy it. And inshallah, with that, we can get close to Allah Almighty. Subhanallah, bihamdi, subhanallah, bihamdi, subhanallah, bihamdi, subhanallah, bihamdi, subhanallah, bihamdi, subhanallah, bihamdi, subhanallah,